welcome back to Tammy Talks About. So here we are at part four already of the Australia incident, courtesy of the right side of the Roaring Rapids over on Twitter and the breakdown that they have done and the deep dive into each and every one of these incidents. So before we get into the video, you know I've got to do the shilling. If you like this video, leave me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and let me know what you think. And of course, as always, share these videos. And you know, the thing is, I know we've all been through this a thousand times. We've all heard these. We all know, or at least think we know, each and every in and out of each of these incidents. But for myself anyway, I find this fascinating because I like to hear other people's point of view or things that maybe they noticed that I didn't notice, anything new. And like someone said in the comments, you know, it, it's been a while since we went over these. So I hope you are enjoying these as much as I am. And you know, I don't know how many parts we're gonna have in this series because this is a really long thread they did. Let's just jump into it. In Ms. Hurd's US claims of 41119, Afterwards, I flew back to Los Angeles and Johnny returned to his separate house in West Hollywood. I had a busted lip, swollen nose, and cuts all over my body, which friends, family, medical professionals, and co-workers all witnessed. Number one, Miss Hurd didn't fly back to Los Angeles on her own. In fact, she couldn't be trusted to fly back to Los Angeles on her own. Ben King was her chaperone. He flew, black, he flew back to Los Angeles with Ms. Hurd, 3-9-15, one of the days she claims was part of her three-day hostage situation. That's so ridiculous. She is so dramatic. Number two, if Ms. Hurd was violently assaulted, both, both physically and sexually, had a busted lip, a swollen nose, and cuts all over her body, she would have needed immediate medical attention, 3815 in Camara, Queensland. Yet Dr. Kipper no notes none of these alleged in injuries. Number three, if Miss Hurd was violently assaulted and she had all this busted lips, swollen nose, and cuts all over her body, she would have needed the, the uh, medical attention immediately. And while she was in Queensland, yet in Los Angeles, she didn't seek medical attention either. So she didn't get it in Queensland. She didn't get it in Los Angeles. I mean, you got a busted lip, swollen nose, cuts all over your body. You're an actress. Your body, your face is your pride, is everything. And so you would think she would have been seeking out medical attention to make sure there was no scarring. I mean, if nothing else, she would have went to a dermatologist or plastic surgeon, nothing. Number four, if Miss Hurd was so violently assaulted, she would have needed the attention, the medical attention, yet Ben King, he saw none of these alleged injuries. You know, she had the busted lips, swollen nose, cuts all over her body, yet Ben King saw none of this. And number, let's see where are we at. Oh, okay, number five. If Miss Hurd was violently assaulted and had a busted lip, a swollen nose, and cuts all over her body, she would have needed the immediate medical attention in Queensland. Yet no one else that came to the house on 3815 saw these injuries. And if you'll think about the, um, the audio we've heard, no one mentions any injuries to her in any of that audio. Number six, Miss Hart's friends, family, consist of Whitney, Miss Pennington, Miss Sexton, Mr. Wright, and Mr. Drew, all of who evidence shows have been lying since 2016 for Miss Hart. And what co-workers does she speak of that saw the evidence of these alleged injuries? In Ms. Hurd's U.S. claims of 411-19, to this day I still have scars on my arms and feet from this incident. Attached here too as Exhibit 8 is true and correct copy of 
of a picture of scars that are still on my left arm from this incident. Number one, Miss Heard on 4515, and I'll put up a picture here. She is doing a, she's doing re dance rehearsal for the Danish girl. And this was on 4515 without a single noticeable wound on her arms or feet in London. And she was at a dance rehearsal, like I said. The cuts all over her body, the alleged bruises, she claims they wouldn't have healed in less than a month. And, and that's the true, you know, that's true. There would still be evidence of that in less than a month. Number two, I'm also going to put a picture up here. Ms. Heard at Heathrow Airport in London on March the 30th. Now you think about it, that's two weeks later. Notice the shoes she's wearing. No one with alleged injuries to her feet would be able to wear shoes like that just 22 days later. Hmm. And number three, and I'll put up a picture of her scars here. After all the alleged violence in Australia on March the 15th, the only evidence photo Ms. Hurd submits in Exhibit 8 is a photo of her left arm with a straight line scar about 1 to 1.5 inches long, which is 25.4 millimeters to 38.1 millimeters in length. Two scars not consistent with the allegations or with jagged glass cuts, she alleges. And that's true. That Now, I am not at all saying this is what she's done, but that to me looks more like self-harm. Because it is, let's see, it's her left arm, she's right-handed. And that's been there for a while. And it seems to get re-injured quite often. In Mr. Depp's U.S. claims of 3119, unbeknownst to Mr. Depp, no later than one month after his marriage to Miss Heard on 2315, she was spending time in a new relationship with Tesla and SpaceX founder Elon Musk. Uh, in Mr. Depp's U.S. claims of 3119, only one calendar month after they were married, while he was out of the country filming in March of 2015, Eastern Columbia Building personnel testified that Ms. Hurd received Musk late at night at Mr. Depp's penthouse. And, you know, I don't give Muskie the benefit of the doubt here. What self-respecting man is going to go to a married woman's house? This is not only a married woman, but the woman of someone you don't even know the husband. You know, it's not like him and Johnny were big buddies. Now, why is he there late at night when her husband is out of the country? I mean, it's not like he's an actor, so what was he doing there? Hmm. What's those saying? Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> I don't think I want to know. <laughs> In Mr. Depp's U.S. claims of 3119, specifically, Ms. Hurd asked staff at the Eastern Columbia building to give her friend, Elon, access to the building's parking garage and penthouse elevator late at night, and they testified they did so. In Mr. Depp's U U.S. claims of 3119, building staff would s then see Ms. Hurd's friend, Elon, leaving the building the next morning. Now, I know him and Amber were not having slumber parties. I mean, come on, folks. In Mr. Depp's U.S. claims of 3119, Musk's first appearance in Mr. Depp's penthouse occurred shortly after Miss Heard threw a vodka, vodka bottle at him in Australia when she learned that he wanted to wanted the couple to enter a post-nuptial agreement concerning assets in her in their marriage. And I'm going to stop right there. But you know, that's one thing that's always really got me about this incident. He asked for a post-nup. We're talking about a man with hundreds of millions of dollars normally would have had a prenup. And you remember, you know, she likes to say, I was financially independent throughout our entire marriage. Then why, why would a fight ensue that was so violent that she throws vodka bottles at him and severs his finger 
if she's so financially independent? Seems like she wouldn't care. I mean, she's this amazing actress. She doesn't need Johnny's money. Remember, she gave $7 million to charity. Oh, wait a minute. No, she never gave anything to charity. I mean, come on. Give me a break. But anyway, what did you think about this? We'll have some more tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed it. You have an amazing day wherever you are. And until next time, be blessed. Mm -hmm.